Hey everybody, sorry I've been kind of MIA the uh, last couple days, um, but hopefully some of you have found out what happened. You'll see hints throughout the video of what happened this weekend. Uh huh. So yeah, pretty exciting. Um, but to get back to work, because you know, school's school, even though it's virtual, um, to review the video and all the mealtime stuff. Um, so I'm going to review. Today's video, I'm going to review uh, the documentary, try to go over the answers. I'm also going to try to put up a like a title slide so you can see all of the answers this time instead of me just say them. Um, I'm going to throw some cool facts at you, and then we're going to talk about Assignment 3, which is already on the website. Um, it's also either down or to the side of this video. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, so... Hopefully you watched the awesome, ridiculous cartoon slash documentary thing. I don't know how you want to describe it. Um, it's kind of entertaining, but it captured a lot of what we were doing. We we're supposed to do in class uh, and put it all into one video so it works out perfectly. Um, so, question one. Make sure you have your paper out or you have your computer loaded or you're taking the answers. Um, it was, the question was like push and pull factors of how it got women uh, to the factories. Um, so here's what I had for push factors. Okay, push factors. So hopefully it says push factors if I do it right. Okay, thanks, so, so. Nice. Uh, push factors um, that cause women to move to the farms was uh, difficult life on or from from the farms to the factories um, was difficult life on farms. Uh, the the conditions they had to work in. Um, so that was one reason that kind of pushed women to the factories. Um, connected to that is the low wages and poor working conditions on farms were reasons for them to go and move into the factories. Um, so the pull factors, maybe I'll put pull on this side, um, pull factors uh, for uh, why women went to the, to the factories uh, job opportunity was awesome. Women can were sought after as employees um, for a couple reasons, which will probably come back up at the end of the video into tomorrow's assignment three. Um, so job opportunities connected to that is the wages. Um, and it was like the first time women were seen as, oh my God, I can earn cash wage. That's awesome. And so cool. So it was this great opportunity. Um, they were promised like these wholesome atmospheres, working atmospheres, which you could live there and work there um, at the same spot. You get this room and board, you get food, you get this camaraderie of uh, working with women of the same age. Um, so that was kind of a big selling point. The promise of a better future for them if they went and worked in the factories. Even older mothers, as you saw in the video, were uh, like kind of pushing and encouraging younger women to go to try and like get money and go out and like make it on their own. Um, and the last probable pull factor, um, at least that I found, there are more that you could have found, um, was provided a, like these, these factories also were boarding places. So people, boarding means like I was living there, like you would live there, um, on the factory. So these places provided a place, um, to eat and sleep for the girls who worked there. So that's question one. Um, now question two, hopefully it's right here. Woo. Okay. Uh, um, life like at the boarding houses. All right, remember, so boarding houses are where uh, the girls stayed while they worked on the factories. It was typically in the same area. Um, the, the mill would be in one spot, and then the, the boarding house would be on the other spot. All of us, you could all walk to the same area. It's kind of like a college campus, I guess. Um, except instead of college, it was work in really crazy conditions in a factory. So, um, life like at boarding condition, or at the, at the boarding houses. Um, really strict rules and curfews. Um, kind of these restrictions there. Um, such as no alcohol. Um, you had to require a Sunday, uh, attend Sunday uh, church. Um, but... You know, that Sunday was seen as your only kind of free day. So after church, you kind of had free time. Um, so basically, you were, you were stuck working six days a week. But oops, I kind of gave answer to the third question. Um, but you had like cool dinners, like pie, 
coffee, fish dishes. Um, but you got three meals a day. You got room and board. Um, except to pay. Ooh, does anyone know? Try to see if you can come up with the answer because I can't hear you. Um, how much it cost the mill girls to be boarded at the factory? Pause. Right, a dollar twenty-five essentially. If you didn't get that, totally fine. But a dollar twenty-five, they had to pay the place for their room and board. So they had to work there, but then they had to pay to be boarded there. A little fishy, but I guess they kind of get the food and all that stuff. Um, so uh, they were cramped. There was there were pretty cramped rooms. You had about two to three beds per to a room, so you got to have roommates. Great. Um, you know, mice and rodents were a thing, and you had to go to a communal outhouse, which is always great. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, Sunday was the only free day, but I already said that one. So, um, real quick question. I'm going to have these little quick, quick fact questions. But first quick quack, fact question is, which type of mills were most successful? Wool mills or cotton mills? Cotton mills, correct. And then, why do you think cotton mills? Remember, going back to a couple other things, but where was all the cotton coming from? The South, and who was working to make, to produce all that cotton? Slaves. So if you had slaves being forced to produce cotton, that cotton could go north, boom, cotton mills had a better chance of success over wool mills. So you saw wool mills kind of fall out of, of suit, replaced by cotton, which is why clothing shifted from wool to cotton, right? Kind of makes sense. Boom. Next question. Sorry. Um, number three we had was the working conditions of the factories. Okay. Um, anyone know how many hours they had to work a day? Right. 12 to 13 hours. Okay. Um, it was super loud in there. Very dangerous. You could get trapped in a belt as you saw. You could get knocked over by something. Your hair can get stuck sometimes and you would often hear stories of girl's hair being ripped out of their heads because it was getting it got caught into the machines and then they started to tie up the hair. Um, but you had these you had the girls in dresses around these looms so they can get their dresses stuck. It was just like, oh my god, what are we doing? And then uh it was dust filled, so you're just dust constantly in the air. Um, and then to make things worse, these Corporation owners, or the, these people who owned the mills and the factories, they were like so like set on making a profit, they tried to cut any way they can. So all of those dangers were kind of ignored, and then things were made worse. They started to say, look, we need to make more cotton. Um, so they started to have girls tend to three machines instead of, it used to be just one girl, one machine. So she knew her machine and it would be more safe. And also you're not having girls run in different directions in these crazy factories. I mean, you saw what they look like. Everything's crammed together. So they started to have girls run three machines. Um, and then not only did their wage not increase because of this extra work, but they often had their wages decreased and lowered in order to produce a better profit for the company. And who were typically run by men. Stupid. Like, unbelievable. Um, and uh, women were often seen as uh, parts of the machine. They weren't really seen as workers. They were just seen as parts of the machine. Um, so, sorry. So it's a moment again. Um, ooh, another quick question. Um, at the end, it kind of talked about this, but most mills at first were located near rivers, okay? Because they were typically powered by like this giant wheel that would pull the belt that would go into the factory and then it would turn the machine. So it's like this cool belt system that would work. And, you, and the, the thing that would turn the gigantic wheel outside to get the belts going was water power. So you needed rivers, okay? What was invented to what was invented that ended up replacing the water wheels and allowed for mills and factories to not have to be near rivers. 
steam engines, all right? Steam engine was super cool. It allowed for them to have to, you could move these mills now to, to inland areas, um, which was important because it allowed more accessibility to different people in different geographies. So you didn't just need rivers in the north in order to have these factories. Um, yeah. So again, our big question is, so what did they do about it? Okay, so flashback. Go back to question three, think about all the working conditions, especially the wage and the three machines per girl. This obviously was a, uh, a danger, but also an injustice. So what did the girls do about it? They wrote petitions to voice their concerns. They went on strikes, which was called turning out at the time. Um, and then these strikes were sometimes successful, sometimes not. Um, sometimes it was like this weird fake compromise, um, and management would often fire just the ring leaders, um, to really kind of send a message and to kind of try and squash those rebellious women and keep the women who would be like more likely to, to work those jobs. So, um, if you have to go back and like pause, I apologize. Um, but, Ooh, one more quick question before I introduce assignment three. Um, once the steam engine was invented, where did factories typically go? The south, okay? And again, all these factories are trying to find, there's a commonality. They moved to the south for cheap labor, and these factories tried to originally hire women because they thought that they can get uh, women to work the factories for cheap labor low wages, which is what they did, but then the women ended up having these protest movements. So these factories will often follow cheap labor, and you still see it today. Why do most American, why did all of these American companies move their factories to different countries? Labor, cheap labor. We have a lot of factories that went to China because you can have cheaper labor if you have everything made there and ship it over. So it's all about cheap labor. That's why slavery was a thing, too, originally, was cheap labor. And then cheap labor, racism, we'll get into slavery uh, this week, we kind of shift there. Um, so, okay. Whew, sorry about that. I hope it made sense. Um, the last thing I want to do, oh my god, I'm already at like 13 minutes, I'm really sorry, um, is assignment three. Super simple, just take a look at the source. Um, you're going to read the source. It's a memoir um, from Harriet Hanson Robinson, I think is the last name. And she talks about her life, um, especially during these strikes. Um, so you have six questions to answer. I'm trying to intend you to build towards the last question. Um, but keep in mind the question of, so what did they do about it? Pretty much it's very connected to number four, but you're going to kind of get a different sense of what those strikes were kind of like. Uh, oops. Gave away. Um, and also, think, keep thinking about um, the big significance and, like, the, I guess, the, the big lesson we can learn from um, these women going on strike. Um, and that, so what did we do? What, what did they do about it? And kind of, how did they kind of break the glass ceiling to a little bit? Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, I hope you are safe and healthy, and I hope you are helping, uh, people at home take care of the house and, and, uh, doing anything that can keep you safe and healthy, and, um, I hope you like my hat. <laughs> uh, I miss you all very much, and, uh, yeah, see you next time.